And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Stalking Hunters. Gonna be our next deck. We played this deck one time a while ago, but I switched up a couple of things. So basically what this deck is about, it's about playing Stalking Shadows in a deck with a ton of awesome targets. So of course, Stalking Shadows is a really powerful two mana card that allows you to pick a follower in the top four and then you draw it, so you get a draw and then you also get an ephemeral copy. So we want really good targets, and that's what Bilgewater has. Bilgewater has really good at targets, including Jaw Hunters. And so that was kind of like the beginning is that I wanted Stalking Shadows with Jaw Hunters. This was back whenever uh, Lee Sin Zed was everywhere, and and uh, Jaw Hunters was a really good way to, to challenge Lee Sin. Um, but that's, that's kind of what our deck's named after, Stalking Hunters, these two cards. But then also we have, you know, like just all these things, like even just grabbing Black Market Merchant and getting two nav cards or another Fortune Croaker, Pool Shark. These are all good things. Now, with us playing the Smooth Soloist deck the other day, I was really impressed with Smooth Soloist. So I put in a couple of copies of Smooth Soloist in here. This could also be another great card to hit with Stalking Shadows, where you get to play your first Smooth Soloist that makes the other one, that makes your Ephemeral one cheaper. And you can play your Ephemeral one and make everything else a lot cheaper also. <clears throat> so yeah, going to go Smooth Soloist, and then of course Sprayfin, Yodel Grifter, Riptide Rex. These are all things that are amazing to have multiple copies of. So Stalking Shadow should be a really good card in our deck. Plus it says draw a card. If you can see, like we have lots of things to draw a card. So Pool Shark, Black Market Merchant, Fortune Croaker, Stalking Shadows, Pilfer Goods, um, Yodel Grifter, Zap Sprayfin. All of those things draw cards to help Twisted Fate level up. So we're also kind of like a turbo uh, Twisted Fate deck as well. All right, so that's our deck. Let's uh, give it a try. We're going to go play five games over in ranked. So Bilgewater Allegiance with Stalking Shadows. All right, Tom Kench Soraka. This could definitely be a tough matchup, but hopefully we can find, you know, like we have all the nab cards, right? So hopefully we can nab some good stuff from them. Um, so I like Butcher on one, Black Market on two. So we don't really need the Pool Shark right now. We're going to mulligan that card. Definitely keep Stalking Shadows. Hope they do not have a one drop. Just pass the turn. Now we have a one drop. Nothing but the stink of blood and sweat. That's not as good. Hard to get rich. So it took two damage. You're all so cute. They had a lot of one drops. Caring for the stars shows their true potential. I can't wait to see them when they're all grown up. I'll go with the Zap Spray Fin. Ooh. Could go Twisted Fate blue card and start leveling up Twisted Fate. Go with the I'm gonna go Spray Fin though. This so yeah, as you can tell, all right, well now I can't, I can't uh, attack them because then they, they do damage there. You can tell getting cards out of our hand is actually, you know, like that can actually be a problem, which is why the, the smooth soloist is going to be so important. Never lost a fair game or played one. Eyes open. This is 10 cards. So I guess we're going to have to warning shot them. Don't really want to though. Warning shot them, that is. Man. Their deck's usually not this aggressive. You can't do this. Try again. Alright, we're just gonna burn this card. I think it should still count as a twist of fate level up. Look after our own. 
I've never seen their deck be this fast. I guess that's what four one drops will do. I really need the smooth solos out, but it's, unfortunately, it's just like you know too late. I will find the goodness in you, River King. Who only provides temporary sustenance, child? Well, you've already got the pot boiling. Yes, but not for you. It's four. Go on then. Watch the ball, folks. You weren't using it. Well, you already got the pot boiling. Yes, but not for you, Army. So I want to get. I don't want to. I just don't want to do two damage to an ally. But I want to just get rid of these shakedowns from my hand. So we're at seven out of eight with this twisted fate right now. Gotta trust your instincts. Win. I think we'll be fine. Looks like I'm on a hot streak. Stand back. Where there's a will, there's a meal. Okay, that's not bad. I'm glad we got rid of that card in hand so I didn't just burn that twist of fate. Wow. Excuse my impertinence. Only fools play the hand they're dealt. You leave me no choice. I do enjoy prospecting. Ready for anything. Live with purpose. I leave my own. I need this warning shot for next turn. I guess I don't. Yeah, no, I do. I never disclose my sources. So I can shake down, but that'll still just on the 8 3 once on the 4 4 power. Alright, Diana Nocturne. This deck is good. To see how I want to do this if I want to have like warning shot black market merchant on the second turn or if we want to wait and have like make it rain kind of see what they got going on her flowers bring the moonlight with them <laughs> okay well I definitely want to make it rain these things There. Yeah, I'll just keep the spell mana as well. Nightfall is difficult to play against. So you're wondering if they'll nerf Trundle too much and then the ladder will be all aggro? I don't think you have to worry about that. You can definitely play various mid-range decks that are good against aggro. But it's really hard to do, like, the all the ramp that 
that, uh... I like just the ramp in the top, like how powerful the top end is in these ramp decks. You can't really, you know, it's, it's really difficult to beat those things. So that's why I passed, because I was I didn't want my thing to just die to Diana. Diana is why I passed. I didn't want to play like Yodel Grifter and it dies to Diana. I'm planning on Jaw Hunter's challenge, Diana. It's a little odd they played Onlooker unless they like wanted to play, you know, Nocturne. Definitely feels like they wanted to play Nocturne. I'm not sure if I if I can stop them. Like, so I could pass, and then they don't get to play Nocturne, and they waste all this mana. Uh, but the next turn, they could still... They'd have to have something else that they play first, and then Nocturne. But the, that means I'm probably dead, though. I guess I can go Beast Below, and then Mountain Goat. It's a really good something else to play. Double Make Arena, of course, doesn't really kill things. Down to one. Yeah, you don't want to cross me. RV. Why do I always do that? I need to do the Pilfer Goods first and then the Smooth Soloist. Ah, oh, I always mess that up. I was even thinking about that like whenever we're passing the turn and stuff. I was like, how, how am I sequencing this? All right, not really punished. There's plenty of killing left. We didn't really have out. GG's. Yeah, another really fast aggro deck. I hope they don't have just a, another great hand, because I don't think they're worth beating a great hand like our last opponent just had a great hand. I think we beat great hands from aggro decks I my books. Hope that's all right. with this current construction of all card advantage. We've ended both games with like 10 cards in hand. <laughs> so we have we have done that. We saw even like the Tom Ken Soraka obviously isn't an aggro deck, but how they had it with all three of their uh, one mana two twos and how I mulliganed, um, you know, definitely made it seem like an aggro deck. You said you're sick of facing aggro and feel the rush only. Well, that's the problem with feel the rush. I mean, that's that's all feel the rush is fault. It, feel the rush is just pushing out any kind of mid range deck, and so like your only option of beating feel the rush is playing, uh, you know, like these aggro decks. It's, it's what happens when you have... Um, to have a balanced metagame, you need to have the, you know, the beginning parts of, of, like, the decks need to be kind of balanced, which they kind of are. You know, like, you can play, you know, like, this is Noxus PNZ aggro. Our last opponent was playing Shadow Isles Targon. Like, the, the aggro decks are pretty balanced. Like, there's a lot of different, um, for, you know, ways that you can play aggro. And they're pretty balanced. It's just 
so you need like the early game balance and you need the top end balance but the thing is is right now with feel the rush the top end is not balanced whatsoever freljord um you know freljord just has like so much such better ramp and top end than the other regions that the other regions can't compete with the top end and so therefore you're only left with one top end deck i think i just pass Yeah, it was it was definitely better before. Yeah, then they it started with them um, buffing up the weirding stones to be an 04 instead of an 03, and then just make more and more ramp. Yeah, then for some reason in Call of the Mountain they just wanted to make all of ramp, and then uh, you know Trundle Trundle was just super powerful. Um, you know the four six regeneration, getting a zero mana 08. That Trundle is just r ridiculous, and then they just kept on going, and then now you have Feel the Rush. The got me good. That's why it's basically just aggro and Trundle ramp decks, because um, the top end of Runeterra is not currently balanced. We're going to go after their cards that are very cheap. And that they're already really cheap, and then make try to make them cheaper with Black Market Merchants. Don't worry, I've read all about this. This dude, Academic's kind of cool in our deck. We play in build rules. Like a fish in water. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Darn. Oh, I played the wrong one. I played the ephemeral. Oh, I played the wrong one. That was just me playing it too casually. I just cast the wrong card. Because I, I really want four blockers for the, you know, my four blockers for their four things. Uh, now I'm going to have three blockers. Yep. Yep, that's me. Jamaican. Yeah, we pretty dead. So I could cast Vengeance. It's like this puts me down to two. We could cast Vengeance and go to four. I could pull for goods and look for like jury rigs, but they already got the two jury rigs. Wait a minute. We're gonna do this. That would've been a lot nicer to have another blocker. The two two, I just played the wrong fortune croaker. Yep. Cost me that game. You have Jamaican, yeah, I've moved on. I've started playing Legends of Runeterra now. We're over here all the time. All right, playing against some scouts. Another very good aggressive deck. Not what I want to face. So it looks like I'm probably just gonna be playing Fortune Croaker as a two mana two three. Which I think could be just reasonable. I think I would rather play it as that than wait. Yeah, we'll just have two mana, two three. You're covered. The deal is yours. Yep, hey, I got the spirits. Oh, I hear them. 
Okay, we're going to attack. I've got your back. All right, good attack. I just didn't think it was going to be very possible. Like me, past turn, they have misfortune, play misfortune, then I get to Jaw Hunter's challenge. I just didn't think that that was very uh, realistic of an outcome to of something to happen. Let us decide to get the two damage and attack in. Uh, let's see. So we're going to just let this happen. So I'm going Twisted Fate Gold Card. I'm always up for a round or two. Now this will have, you know, Twisted Fate in play before we start drawing more cards. Hold it, partner. And even if this Twisted Fate dies, that's not the end of the world for us. With us having more Twisted Fates. Nothing gets between me and my mark. So this gives us the opportunity to have more red card, gold card. Scouting ahead. I played the spray fin over the abyssal eye, thinking that I was going to be needing to trade with these three power things, and I'd rather have the spray fin to be able to do that. Not too bad. Here we go. We live here. Fire beware. All right, down to six. My duty's done. So I'm planning on blocking the Quinn with Twisted Fate. Put Quinn down to one health. Have my other Twisted Fate. Uh, maybe be able to red card that. Which I guess I can just challenge first. I'm su surprised the 3-4 Badger Bear didn't attack. But, you know, I don't want this thing to level up. So we're at 3 out of 4 for leveling up. But blocking with the Twisted Fate just gives me... It gives me the ability to challenge one and then two gives me another... Red card, gold card opportunity. So none of these were Yordle, Grifter, Warning Shots. They are all three of the Warning Shots in our deck. All three of the regular ones. Stay on the target. I could still potentially find Jaw Hunters as well. I'm always up for a round or two. I'm gonna go gold card over red card so that Ranger's Resolve doesn't save Quinn. Sharp Sight does though. All right, come on, Jaw Hunters. Yes. Stalking Hunters, that's our deck. And of course I get to use the ephemeral copy, right? So like that's perfect that like we can use the ephemeral one because it's just gonna die anyway. All that glitters. We're not done yet. Blood and guts. Finally. Blood and glory. 
Okay. So while if, if they you know if they attack immediately with the 3-4 Badger Bear, I am gonna block with the Twisted Fate, which that's a bummer that I'm not gonna be able to have a level of Twisted Fate. Okay, good, they didn't. Because I couldn't I don't want to just die to another repose. They've played I think maybe just one repose so far. They played that repose the last turn. Still, two Riptide Rex. We should be good. Scouting ahead. Okay. No! All right, GG's. Got to win. Our seven-game losing streak is over. Cool, cool. All right, so we got some more Demacia Leona and a really insult, not an aggressive deck. I like that. I like not an aggressive deck. Let's get rid of that. I, I don't know about this Vengeance. I think I'm going to keep Vengeance. Vengeance just seems like an important card to have against big dragons. Plus, it's a Shadow Owls card, one of my four total Shadow Owls cards, the three Stalking Shadows and the Vengeance. And so it gives me a lot better chance for my Yordle Grifter's Allegiance to hit if we take out 25% of the total misses by keeping it. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Yep, yep, I'm planning on joining the seasonal tournament. They'll be here on Runeterra. Great card to nab. Great card to nab. Danger pay. In her radiant blessing. Follow the horizon. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Alright, gonna work my way towards leveling up Twisted Fate. Gonna go blue card. I'll even have you know like Yordle Grifter, Stalking Shadows, all that kind of stuff. This would be a matchup I would like to, and even just how this game's playing out, I really like to find um, sunlight guiding my brethren. Smooth soloist to make things cost less mana. Could unload our hand a little faster. Yeah, you don't want to cross me. Hmm. The mountain knows me. I am the traveler. They have a lot of invoke cards over there. Planning on attacking with everything except for black market merchants. Challenge over here. The guilty will bend. That was rude. All right, well, twist a fate down. Better than so I didn't think too much about Hush. Getting me. Gold card. All that glitters. Spilled paint is 
just accidental art. Smooth soloist. Let's go. Don't need to play the two mana Fortune Croaker right now because I can just play it next turn for zero mana. So zero mana is better than two. Close your eyes and drift away. Now I got zero mana Black Market Merchant. All right, two out of eight. Don't ask where it's from. Ask how much. Relax. Riptide Rex. Well, hello there, Riptide Rex. I could try to level up Twisted Fate by going Spray Fin trying to hit Pilfer Goods. Like, Riptide Rex won't really be able to take down Screeching Dragon. It could maybe get the Warrior. Gotta trust your instincts. We'd have a a little less than a 50% chance to hit Pilfer Goods. I think I'll just pass and vengeance the whatever challenges my Twisted Fate. Good thing we didn't just go with the... Oh. Our other option. Alright, so nine mana. That's enough to go Warning Shant, Smooth Soloist, and Riptide Rex. Cool. I want to play the Make It Rain, though, and try to clear up some of these one health things. I'll take that. Does mean I don't get to... I don't get to play Riptide Rex and Smooth Solo's or Abyssal Eye. Go this route. Yeah, that is a lot of. Um, you know, this could be a lot of elusive damage. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. They discarded Hush. I'm sorry, Black Market Merchant. Hmm. I grabbed Equinox. Well, that's too Let's bad. Do this. There's only one true light. I don't know if it's worth playing that shield bear or not. I don't know, but now we're at eight out of eight for Twisted Fate. Let's like level that up. And so Twisted Fate red card with Mega Reigns can clear away like some of these little things. Jeez. That just obliterates everything. That doesn't seem too fair. Alright, so all of my stuff will be dead, all their stuff will be dead. Oh, none of these none of these make it rains hit the 8-4? I needed one of the Mega Rains hit the 8 4. So now I'm not. Or, well, is this. Is this doing one damage to them? Six. So yeah, now Riptide Rex will do six damage. 
Okay, well, yeah, so they're at five. All right, so Riptide Rex does six damage, but I guess we have Twisted Fate now. Back at the table. So I guess we play that first. Forward in the name of the Solari. My selection. Blue as the Serpentine. Because it wasn't necessarily guaranteed a win if I would have just played at Riptide Rex. Because they could have, you know, star shaping, like they had star shaping before. So I think this is just a better play with star shaping. It was in the cards. All right, there we go. <laughs> that's a, so. That's what. Yeah. So we played against a slower deck there, and you got to see how powerful our deck is. I think our deck is really powerful against those slow decks. Um, that we have so much card draw. The smooth soloist. Uh, you got to see that in action. Playing our two smooth solos, making everything cost four less mana, and so now Twisted Fate zero, Yordle Grifter zero, Sprayfin zero. And, you know, you just have all those things be zero. You get to to nab a bunch of cards, and you know, then you. Uh, and everything like that. So I think our deck's super powerful against the slower decks because we even saw they just obliterated six cards, including my you know Twisted Fate and um, Sprayfin and all sorts of stuff that they just obliterated six cards, and we still just <laughs> you know had had tons of stuff left over. Um, yeah, so they they played a complete board wipe. They had the attack token and and were at like eight life and played a complete board wipe and still ends with them surrendering <laughs> by the end of that turn. Um, and them having, you know, like four other things in play when they did the complete board wipe. So, uh, yeah, I just, so that's what I like. I like this against the slower decks, tons and tons of card advantage to outgrind them. And uh, then, you know, you get to make everything cost a lot less mana and even though you, the thing about this deck is we don't have very good removal. We have like Jaw Hunters to challenge, which uh, that game four we got to pull off the Stalking Shadows. Go find Jaw Hunters. Jaw Hunters kill the Quinn. That was clutch. That game four. But we have Jaw Hunters. We have three mana make it rain, and we have one copy of Vengeance. And I guess we have red card, gold card. So that's not really the best removal, but that's why we have all the nab stuff because usually especially in the slower matchups, they're going to be playing good removal. Um, you know, like they'll be playing Vengeance and Ruination and all that kind of stuff. And so we got Black Market Merchant, Pilfer Goods, Yordle Grifter to be able to go and nab those. And I guess Riptide Rex. <laughs> yeah, Riptide Rex is not bad for removal. Uh, yeah, you could... There's a lot of options in Bilgewater to play. There's a lot of good cards to play. Um, you know, Boxtopus is another card you can play for that removal. Um, but yeah, Dreadway Deckhand, if you want to make your Make It Rains and your red card better, that is an option. Hired Gun, giving them Vulnerable, also another option. So there are a lot of good options, but the thing is we just can't play all of them. I have it more skewed towards uh, slower decks with all these nab cards. You could play less nab and more and more like board control against aggro decks. Like if you're going to be playing against, <clears throat> if, you, if you think you're going to be playing against a bunch of aggro decks, you probably want to go more uh, Dreadway Deckhand, Hired Gun, that kind of stuff, and, and have more removal um, and better removal and things like that. But I like just drawing lots of cards, and that's what I have it skewed towards, of drawing tons and tons of cards. All right, so anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I always love seeing those. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.